All right, we are now about to start the very last unit of Physics 20. It's a little bit different than everything we've done so far, but it's not a mathematically hard unit. The challenge with this unit is this is the unit that is really heavy on the theory. But if you take your time with it, you shouldn't have any major issues with it. So we are going to be looking at something called oscillatory motion and mechanical waves. As you're going to see a little bit later, mechanical waves are a form of oscillatory motion. And we are going to talk about all that. So the first part of this unit, we are going to look at what is oscillatory motion. Simple harmonic motion. We'll talk about restoring force. We'll talk about an oscillating spring and pendulum. And we will talk, finally, about mechanical resonance. So let's get this started. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to just review some friends that we talked about in the last unit. So we've all encountered this at some point, you know, kind of on a hot summer day. You're just sleeping in bed, and then all of a sudden you hear that It's probably the sound of a mosquito or fly buzzing by. And we always want, sometimes maybe people wonder, like, what's causing that buzzing sound? And what's actually happening is it's that flapping of the wings. So in this case, we have a very friendly looking bee. So you kind of see its wings in the up position, and then they're going to move to this down position, and then they're going to move to this up position. So we would say that this is a complete cycle of the flapping of the wings. It go, it makes a full downwards motion and then a full upwards motion again. So we, when we talked in the last unit about this thing called period, the period would represent the time it takes for the bee to flap its wings down and back up. Now, what we are interested in, though, for the time being, is we're interested in keeping this period constant. Now, if this period remains constant, what we would say is that this bumblebee with its wings, it's exhibiting this thing called oscillatory motion. So we're kind of doing a back and forth and a back and forth that's very repetitive. So we do want constant period, and we know period and frequency are related by that inverse relationship. So if we have a constant period, we have a constant frequency. The key is that with oscillatory motion, we want it to be repetitive, but we also want it to be predictable. We should be able to know what's going to happen in a minute, 20 minutes with oscillatory motion. Nothing wild or unexpected should happen. So that's the key. Constant period slash frequency and motion that is repetitive and predictable. So just to refresh from the last unit, we have that relationship for frequency and period. So the frequency is equal to 1 over period, or period is 1 over frequency, depending on what you need, where our frequency is in hertz, and t is the period in seconds. And again, just a reminder, hertz is another way of saying seconds to the minus 1. So this relationship, we're going to use it even more in this unit compared to the last unit. So when we look at oscillatory motion, there are actually plenty of examples of oscillatory motion around us. So we've already talked about, you know, the flapping wings on a bee. You could apply that to birds or the other insects. You know, the spinning wheels on a car, the car, the car tire is going to rotate, or like you could have a bike wheel. Those are all examples of oscillatory motion. Motors are an excellent example of oscillatory motion. Even pendulums will work, but the pendulum I have a little one next to it. This is going to require a little bit of special attention. We have to be a bit restrictive with pendulums, but that's fine. We can deal with that one. So oscillatory motion or periodic motion, it's a really big category. So we're kind of starting here. And as you can see, we kind of go all over the place with it. So with this, I will show you what we're actually going to look at. So with periodic motion, we are going to talk about simple harmonic motion. We will talk about damped oscillators and driven oscillators. Like we'll discuss what they are. We won't actually study them. We've talked about period and frequency. We're going to talk about waves later. We're going to talk about resonance and standing waves. We will talk about that relationship. We will talk about the pendulum. We will not talk about the physical pendulum. That is a university level topic. It's quite challenging. We are certainly going to discuss elasticity, which will lead us into Hooke's Law. We've already talked about elastic potential energy. We'll bring it back. We won't talk about these bulk elastics property. The bulk elastic properties are Young's modulus. That is also a topic that is usually covered at the first year university level for physics. So when we did the previous unit, we did look at oscillatory motion with a pendulum swinging, but we didn't call it that. And we looked at it more from the lens of conservation of energy. So for example, when we have a pendulum swinging, you know, here's my little pendulum, it's kind of at the top of its swing, and then a little bit later, it's going to end up at the bottom of its swing. 
So we know at the top of the swing here, we always said that there is no kinetic energy because it's at rest. And then at the top, we would say that potential energy is a maximum. So what's going to happen when this pendulum moves down to the lowest part of the swing? That gravitational potential energy is going to be converted into kinetic energy such that when we get to the bottom of the swing here, we're going to say EP is a minimum. And if you set the reference point to be zero at the bottom of the swing, then we could say EP is zero. And then we could say that EK is a maximum at the smallest point. Now, once all that potential energy has been converted to kinetic energy at the bottom of the swing, now the pendulum is going to want to go back up. What's going to happen is that kinetic energy is slowly going to get converted to potential energy. The pendulum is going to slow down, reach the top point, and then that motion is going to be repeated over and over and over again if we're assuming like no air resistance and friction. In reality, the pendulum will eventually come to a stop. We're not going to deal with that part here. So because we have these changes in speed, we know that there has to be an acceleration present because we know the definition of acceleration is the change in speed over the change in time. And we also know if there's an acceleration present, a force is not too far behind. What we want to look at is we want to look at those forces that are actually responsible for an object doing that repetitive motion. That is kind of the overarching goal of this section.